Hello, hi, once again, Zoom, Instagram, Facebook, I'm on all three. This is how we do life these days. We just talk to three different live streaming platforms at the same damn time. Why not? Today is day two of the uh, five-day mindful eating solution, a little quick program I put together to help people get a grip on what they call their mindless eating habits, which seem to be really ramping up lately. So we're just spending a lot more time at home because we have to. A lot of us are working at home and then we have these, these bits of downtime in between Zoom calls and we're just rifling through the cupboard. So this, I'm hearing this from my clients all the dang time. So I decided to create a little program to just talk about it. That's what we're going to do. So I've got Facebook, I've got Zoom, I've got Instagram. I can do this. I can do this. A lot stupider people than me have managed three streaming platforms. <laughs> If you have any questions as I talk, go right ahead. I also am going to be really, really respectful of time today. I'm going to wrap this bad boy up in like less than 30 minutes. That's my goal. That's my goal. We'll see what happens. So hi to you all. We got Janice. We got Veronica. We got Gio. Lots of people active on the Facebook group. If you're here with me on Zoom, say hello. Holler at your girl. There's Chris, my buddy, my boy. Um... Teach us chemo sabi, will do. Tara says hi. Okay. Okay. So today is day two. Uh, anybody on Instagram saying hello? Nobody's saying hello. We're good. You guys say hello. Okay. Day two of the five day mindful eating solution. So, hunger. This is about hunger today. Okay. So, let's talk semantics for a second. What's up? Hey, yo, Eddie. Nice to see you. Okay. I created the five-day mindful eating solution once again, because so many of my clients are chastising themselves for mindless eating. Who out there is chastising themselves? Julie's there. Hey, Natalie. Nice. Hi, guys. Okay, stay with me. We're chastising ourselves for mindless eating. So I hear this all the time. So I dug into it because that's what I do. I'm not just going to let that float by. I wanted to dig into it. And here's what I learned. Yes, the eating behaviors that are, uh, you know, admitted to me are somewhat mindless in nature, but that's not the only thing at play here. The feeling behind this is I ate when I wasn't supposed to be. Okay, semantics. I ate when I wasn't supposed to, and that makes me a bad person. I ate when I wasn't supposed to, and that means I'm out of control. I ate when I wasn't supposed to. And that means I need to start again or keep starting again, right? That's, to me, the spirit behind what I'm hearing from my clients. I'm eating when I shouldn't be. So let's talk about that for a sec. When are you supposed to eat? That's a serious question. That, um, that's not even rhetorical. When are you supposed to be eating? I'll wait. I will wait. Somebody give me an answer. No judgment. Just give me an answer. When are you supposed to be eating? When is it okay to eat? When is it okay to eat where it's not suddenly some mindless, bad uh, defect of your character? Anyone? Mueller? Only when hungry. Nicely done, Tara. Tara, you've been here before. Well, the people who are in the five-day mindful eating solution who are receiving the emails, they know the answer. They know the answer. They get the punchline. Um. One, okay, yes, when you're hungry, when you're hungry, when you're hungry, when you're hungry, everybody knows you're supposed, you, that's when you're supposed to eat. You're supposed to eat when you're hungry. And if you're hungry and you eat, that's okay. So one of the reasons why you're eating when you're not supposed to is because you're hungry. <laughs> you're hungry. And your body doesn't care about the arbitrary rules you've made about your food timing. Okay, like, oh, I don't eat after 8 p.m. Cool story, bro. Your body doesn't care. <laughs> it, it, like, whatever rules you think about when you sh when it's okay to eat and when it's not okay to eat, your body doesn't care. Your body's like, mm, I'm hungry, so feed me. Okay, so that's just important to know. And I think that's really logical. We can intellectualize that. Like, yeah, that makes sense. It makes sense. I'm just hungry. Um, now, 
I'm here to absolve you of any guilt or shame you feel about your food behaviors. I do this all day long. I'm, I'm here all day long absolving people of their guilt and shame because so much of what we learned about this stuff comes from what's being commonly referred to as diet culture, which taught you to micromanage every damn thing. But you're trying to micromanage a biochemical impulse for feeding you're trying to override your biology again. We just talked about that yesterday. And I'm here to remind you that you can't out willpower your biology. Um, you're trying to sort of micromanage this thing and then you feel bad about yourself when the wheels fall off because you'll never, once again, you'll never out willpower your biology. So, for example, like diet culture taught us that a well-behaved person is one who can ignore their quiet little niggling calls for a snack. It's like the people who have a little hunger crop up and they're like, no, no, it's 8 p.m. I don't eat or no, no, uh, I'm, I met my calorie goal for the day. People who can really exhibit willpower and will ignore hunger, which, by the way, that's the dictionary definition of willpower. Dictionary definition of willpower, well, in my dictionary anyway, <laughs> is literally the ability to ignore hunger. So, but that is considered a well-behaved dieter, well-behaved person. They have good willpower because they're literally able to ignore their hunger. And we celebrate this as some kind of virtue. It's like, wow, wow, I wish I could be more, I wish we had better willpower. Here's my, here's my suggestion. How about instead of ignoring or micromanaging hunger, you just answer it. Just answer it, but answer it like you mean it. So when you get hungry, answer it like you freaking mean it and give your cells all of the nourishment they're requesting. So this was, this is what I taught in the email today in the five day uh, mindful eating solution. Your hunger comes from your cells. Here comes some kindergarten level science for you. Buckle up, okay? Your hunger comes from your cells. It doesn't come from your stomach doesn't come from your brain, definitely doesn't come from being bored. That's no, there's not just, boredom doesn't make you hungry, sorry. There's no biochemical pathway there. And the cells are requesting nourishment and they're requesting nourishment in about three different forms. I, I'm categorizing these three forms just to keep this really simple. And this was in an Instagram post. If you're watching on Instagram, put it in a post earlier today, you can read it. You guys here who are in the five-day mindful eating solution, you got this in your email. But here's the three categories of nourishment your cells are just waiting for, waiting for you to deliver because that's your job. You're the pilot of the meat suit. You're in charge of the inputs. The body just cues up requests and you're supposed to just right answer them. And that's how the relationship works. So the three forms, I'm getting, getting distracted. Three forms of nourishment, fuel. So this is your calories, right? This is the, the fuel so the cells can make energy for your body and brain right? And, and we understand this food is fuel is a stupid platitude that's been shared so many times. It's just very trite at this point. Um, food is a lot more than fuel. It's also building blocks. That's number two. So your body needs amino acids and fatty acids to put some stuff together in the body, like muscle tissue and lay down, you know, maybe some bone and maybe lay down, you know, just support some of your, your neurological structures with fatty acids. Like, really important building blocks that the, the body needs and the cells are like, we need some more of that. Get it India. And information. That's the third thing. Food is information. So for me, I categorize this as like your minerals, your vitamins, cholesterol, prebiotic fibers, little, little bits of, of nutrition, let's call it, that have really incredibly important nuanced roles in the body. And when the cells ask for, for food, when they queue up hunger, the cells queue up hunger. Now here's the deal. The cells queue up hunger. It goes to the brain. The brain sends the sensation of hunger to your stomach. So it feels like it comes from your brain. It feels like it comes from your stomach. It comes from the cells. It's, this is just the sort of the pathway that the body queues up this signal so that you can answer it. Um, the cells are asking for you to satisfy all of these nutritional needs. And if you fall short on any one of them, then you are undernourished and undernourished cells are going to do what they're going to ask for more like that's great but we need more so people who are perpetually on diets you're not feeding your cells enough you're battling that rabbit you know that that 
intense hunger. Never mind people who are on diets, their metabolic rate also slows down. We're not going to talk about that in the five-day mindful eating solution, but in the context of your cells queuing up hunger, um, when you're not eating enough, when you're restricting yourself, you know, your cells aren't going to stand for that. They're like, nope, we need more. Okay. Undernourished cells call out for more nourishment. Then this makes total sense. You're like, yeah, duh. Right? Right? Right. Right? I need some funny answers here. And then like, what do we do? We're like, well, I'm going to have a black coffee for breakfast. I'm going to have a little salad with chicken breast on the side and, maybe, and, and it's like a little vinaigrette dressing. We're having this lame food that doesn't, just does not satisfy all the nutritional requirements of the cells. It's lame. It's just super lame. So, but part of this comes down to the fact we've had this whole calories thing drilled into our skulls from diet culture. So we only think of hunger in the context of satisfying caloric needs, but there's more. There's, the cells need more than just calories. They just really do. There's a theory called the protein leverage hypothesis. It's just a hypothesis. It's right in the name, hypothesis, just a theory at this point. Um, the theory is that protein is the leverage point. When the body gets enough amino acids, when amino acid levels are shored up, that's when the body cues up a satiety signal. Satiety is you put the fork down. You're like, I'm done eating, I put the fork down. So that's an interesting theory. That's the spirit behind today's session. So the solution to cells that are kind of chronically undernourished and just kind of chronically asking you to keep feeding them, cells that are you know, nudging you to go into the pantry nudging you into the freezer for the ice cream when you're not supposed to be eating it your cells don't care they don't care what time it is or like we just need more nourishment the answer one of the easiest solutions is protein there's a lot of other solutions but i'm i'm simple i'm, I'm simple we're simple around here um protein the solution is protein more protein just more how much more just more that's my official stance on protein just eat more Try it out. It literally can't hurt. Can't hurt. Just try having more. Aim for more and see how it goes. This is my big reveal. Ta-da! Eat more protein and you'll be less hungry because protein foods have amino acids, they have energy, and they have minerals. So you're really answering a lot of the cell's requests for nourishment just in that one food type and everything else that you eat alongside your protein, you know, your veggies or whatever you're having with it additionally shoring up the, nour the nourishment requirements. But protein is really the star of this, this scenario, okay? I can tell you from experience that walking around feeling less hungry is a miracle cure for, for mindless snacking. So, and protein will help you feel less hungry. It's highly satiating. It's highly satiating for all the reasons I just mentioned. Why does protein make us feel more satiated? People say high protein diet keeps you fuller longer it's because you're meeting the nutritional requirements of your cells. I'm sorry, it's not very sexy. <laughs> it's just like your cells are like, thanks. Got you, thank you. And they're like, you can stop eating now. And that's it, it's truly a miracle here. At least it's worth a try. What do you say? I'm gonna see what, what comments you guys have coming in here. I find the Facebook interface very clunky. I can't always pull up the comments. Oh, what kind of protein? That's a good question. I got some questions that are coming in, which I will field. Do you guys have any questions here on the gram? What's up, folks? Anybody in Zoom? Okay, I'll keep talking. Don't tell me with a good time. Some questions that came in um, when I sent this out earlier to my list and have come in here. First of all, what kind of protein? I don't care. Doesn't matter. Anything. So what do we know where protein comes from. Where does protein come from? You guys must know that, right? You know what? Let's not make that assumption. Let's not make the assumption that everybody knows where protein comes from because maybe you don't. I've had clients that didn't know. Like you said to eat protein, but I don't know where, where to get that from. So any animal product, any animal protein, so meat, meat is protein. Meat is protein. So any kind of meat you like, if you like white meat or red meat or fish, poultry, we have eggs, very great source of protein. Uh, there's plant-based proteins, uh, legumes and some grains, seeds, that kind of thing. Uh, we can get protein from some dairy products, like maybe a, like a Greek yogurt has protein. So this is where you get protein from. 
this is your protein sources and whatever protein sources you like, just have more of them. Just have some more, just have a little bit more. Let's start, let's start playing satiety to our advantage and just see what happens when you walk around in life more satiated, more satiated. So any kind of protein, that's my answer to the protein question for today, for this group. I'm cool with any kind of protein you want, just go for it. You work with me in a more one-on-one -on -one kind of environment, we'll probably have a deeper conversation around types of protein, but for this, for this venue, any kind of protein you like. So listen, the question came in like, I don't like fish. Okay, don't eat fish. Or red meat makes me feel uncomfortable. I can't digest red meat very well. Don't eat red meat. H have whatever proteins you like, taste are yummy to you, you feel good about, they feel good in your body. Just have more, just some more. And actually tomorrow on day three, I'm going to talk a little bit about how to really tweak the timing of this to get the most bang for your buck. So stay tuned for tomorrow. Julie says protein shakes. Sure. Sure. Protein shakes are, can be a really interesting way of just having more protein. Um, great, great solution. Great solution. Uh, what kind of proteins do I recommend? This one came in as a question. And so my recommendation, I do prefer animal proteins and dairy proteins over plant proteins, just because the bioavailability is better. And what that means is the body can actually take up, use and assimilate those nutrients better. Plant proteins can be bound up with some other uh, compounds that make it hard for the body to properly absorb them. So we really do want absorbable nutrition. That's always a good thing because the cells are the cells want to absorb it. If they can't absorb it, it's not going to help with the satiety as much. It's not going to help you feel as nourished because your cells had a hard time absorbing it. So let's make it easy on the cells. So uh, to go to Julie's protein shake question here on Facebook, I like I do like a whey protein powder um, because it's very bioavailable, but some people are very intolerant to dairy. So you would want to watch that. So if you're intolerant to dairy, don't have whey protein. So they're just like, you know, you use some logic here, gang. If you're intolerant to dairy, don't, don't like mainline a bunch of Greek yogurt and whey protein powder. Make different choices. If, you, if you're intolerant, you don't like the feeling of red meat, don't eat it. Okay, just make good choices that feel great for you. Because the other thing is, I want you to have an effortless relationship with food. That's the whole reason I get out of bed in the morning. And an effortless relationship with food is not about force feeding yourself stuff you don't like. So choose whatever you like, whatever is yummy. Food's got to be yummy. One question that came in, and, and actually this came in a few times, and it comes in all the time. I want to know who out there has heard this one before. Put up your hand or give me some kind of an emoji. Give me like, what kind of emoji do I want? Hmm. I want the upside down smiley face emoji. That's my favorite one. Give me the upside down smiley face emoji. Zoom people. What's the, it's control command space bar. Chris Pryor taught me that. Upside down smiley face emoji. If you've ever heard this one. Sometimes when you're hungry, you're actually thirsty. And so you should just drink some water. Who's heard that one before? I'll wait. I want to see some smileys, upside down smileys. Chris has heard that one before. Sometimes when you're hungry, you're actually thirsty and you should drink water. That doesn't make any fucking sense. I'm sorry. Oops. I'm sorry. That doesn't even make sense. I'm getting so many upside down smiley faces. Uh, Julie gave me the face palm one. Yes. Because when you hear it, when you hear it like that, you're like, that doesn't even make sense. Well, like, it doesn't even make any sense, does it? It's completely illogical. If you're thirsty, if you need water, your body will queue up a thirst signal. You know what thirsty feels like? Your body's gonna queue up thirst when you need water. <laughs> that's different. Well, that's different. That's totally different. Um, I don't even want to go there with this, but part of me feels like that's a little <sighs> that sound bite. That sound bite about if you're hungry, you might just be thirsty. That feels a little, mm, little disordery to me. I'm there. I said it. I said it. It's like when you're hungry, just chew a piece of gum. When you're hungry, just go brush your teeth. When you're hungry, take a walk. It's like when you're hungry, eat food. Uh, why is that so hard? Why is that so hard? <laughs> when you're hungry, eat food. I'm sorry. Like just excited. I'm going to calm down. 
So I want to bring this back to mindful eating. Um, when you find yourself rifling through the cupboards, whatever you're doing, rifling through the cupboards or hitting up the pantry, and you're like, oh, naughty, I'm so naughty, I shouldn't be eating right now. Well, what if you're just hungry? What if you just didn't nourish your cells enough that day? And they're like, buddy, can you just give me a little snack, a little something? Not a shameful behavior. What if it's just hunger? <laughs> imagine if it was just hunger this whole time. Wow. Can you imagine? Uh, so my answer to this is when you eat, whenever you get hungry, eat protein. Just have more protein because it's highly satiating because it delivers nutrients to the cells in all three categories that I mentioned earlier. Fuel, building blocks, and information. Your cells are like, thank you. We're going to put this to work and you can just go on about your business until hunger shows up again. And what you might find is you get to the end of the day and you're like, hmm, I didn't snack today. It's worth a try. So I had an anecdote I wanted to share with you. And I feel like, I don't, I, this is the second consecutive time I'm going to throw my husband under the bus. He's sitting out there. He has no idea I'm talking about him. But yesterday we were sitting around, we were cooking dinner. We were making pork chops with some veg, uh, I made a salad and we had some barbecued pork chops, delicious protein. And he said, it's really crazy. It's like, it's sorry supper time and I'm not, I haven't been hungry all day. And it's like, I didn't even eat today. Like, it's so weird how I'm not hungry today. Haven't had any snack urges, just haven't been hungry all day. Cause it's kind of weird. Haven't eaten all day. And I was like, dude, I made you a huge breakfast this morning. We had a huge breakfast, like 10 hours ago. Eggs, sausage, you know, there was meat, there was some steak left. It was a very high protein breakfast. We ate that early in the morning. Then we had supper at supper time a high protein breakfast. And he was like, I forgot that I ate that. <laughs> and also I didn't snack at all today. And I didn't have any weird, crazy hunger or hanger because of that protein we had. And it was just so funny that he said that last night, because I was sitting on the couch typing the, the, the email for the, for the, the five day mindful eating solution. As he said that, I was like, dude, we ate a bunch today. We had protein for breakfast and we were on protein for supper. No snack urges. It works. I promise. Okay. I've heard that if you're feeling thirsty, it's too late and you're dehydrated already. Well, anybody, okay. Anybody who's ever worked with me in the reboot or followed me for any length of time will know that I find that to be, sorry, like it's a great question, but it's also ridiculous. Not, you're not ridiculous for asking it. It's not your fault that you asked it because we've heard this. By the time you feel thirsty, you're already dehydrated. That doesn't make sense either. Why, why on earth would the human body evolve with a broken thirst mechanism? It's like, oh shit, it's too late. Oh, I forgot to, you're already dehydrated. It's like, if you feel thirsty, you're thirsty, just drink water. If you feel hungry, you're hungry. So eat food. Don't chastise yourself because you're eating food. You're eating food because you're hungry and that's okay. You're not a bad person for being hunger, hungry. This is actually, I want to, again, I don't want to keep rambling here. I do want to be really respectful and kind of wrap up here, but this is a battle I've been facing with my clients for a long time. This belief that oh, I'd be achieving my goals if I wasn't so damn hungry. And it's like, you're not a bad person for feeling hunger. You're just, you're just a, you're just a human with, you're just a bag of cells trying to get through life. Like hunger is part of that. It's fine. It's not to be feared or micromanaged. Okay. So to summarize, I'll say it again. You're struggling with mindless eating, which is what I'm using as a catch-all term to describe anything in the realm of boredom eating, evening snacking, crazy cravings, just rifling through the pantry, kind of all day nibbling on stuff and you feel bad about it. So first of all, if it's something that you want to improve, if it's something that you want to improve, that's the first important thing. You have to want to improve it. If you don't want to improve it, then that's cool too. But if you're like, I'd like to get to the bottom of this, my solution is feed yourself. Feed yourself the nourishing food that your cells are asking for. And the easiest way to do that is with protein. Any kind of protein you like, just have more. Because protein contains fuel and uh, calories, amino acids, and minerals, which are three things the cells are really, 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 really asking for. They really, really need all that stuff to keep the lights on. 
So satisfy your hunger with protein foods you love and just see how hunger shows up differently throughout the day. See how snacking urges show up differently. See how some of this mindless eating stuff shows up differently. It's worth a try, don't you think? I think so. Um, what else? If there are any other questions I can answer for you, I'm here. I will stick around for another minute or so. Um, tomorrow is day three of the five day mindful eating solution. I'm going to take this concept of hunger and just kind of like to the next level, kind of to the next level. We're going to play around with rhythm because not only is your body a miracle of technology, like this is a biological miracle you're walking around in. The fact that the cells are like, yo, feed us. And you're like, okay. The, the, the way this all works is amazing, but there's also kind of a rhythm and a harmony to all of this biochemistry that, that again goes overlooked when we get into this game of micromanaging ourselves. Like I need to eat every two to three hours. I need to eat because it's lunchtime. Like we just decide that we need to be in control of the timing and the quantity It's like, we're not really in control. Our, our whole job is just to provide the inputs the body's asking for. So tomorrow we're gonna to talk about rhythm. Rhythm, getting into rhythm with your body, getting into harmony with your body. Wouldn't that be incredible? Can you imagine? Whoa. Oh, I was advised by a friend, Primal Health Coach, recently to increase my protein and it's working for me. Oh, yes, great job. That's Lorraine, right? That was you, right, Lorraine? Yes. Good job, Lorraine. It's working. What does it, I mean, it works. <laughs> it works. It just makes everything easier. Veronica says, I wish everyone knew this and made peace with the concept of eating to satiate hunger rather than feeling guilty for eating well. Yeah, thank you. Veronica, you articulated that so much nice, more nicely than I did. <laughs> Making peace with the fact that your body's queuing up hunger for a very, very logical, super um, supportive reason your body is not queuing up hunger to ruin your plans for looking hot in your shorts this summer. It, your, your cells just need nourishment and just, just answer that. Just get into rhythm, get into harmony with your body. So we'll talk about that tomorrow. I'm looking forward to it. That's my favorite thing to talk about. Oh, get ready, buckle up. For now, I'm going to leave you guys. I appreciate your attention. I appreciate everybody here joining me on all of these platforms. And if you have more questions about anything I shared here, DM me. You guys, you guys know where to reach me and get email me, anything, because I love talking about this stuff. I love being here with you. Okay. Going to sign off Instagram first. Bye, Insta. And now, and now we're going to end things over here on Zoom and on Facebook. So thank you, five dayers, for your attention. All you got to do is eat more protein. So what's that going to look like? Let's talk about it in the Facebook group. Okay. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye.